Elizabeth, you have a unique perspective having been in the academy for much of your early career, spent years there doing transformative work um, there, and now being on the philanthropic side, I was wondering if you could give us a sense as a funder how universities are different from other institutions in this area of just society. Um, yes, well first I just want to say how happy I am to be up here with you all and uh, as part of this conversation it's, it's, it's really wonderful. Um, and yeah, so um, I've been in this position not for very long, um, for just four and a half months, but at the same time uh, I realize that, that so much of what I've learned over time it's all funneling into being able to do this work today and I would start with where I think universities are like other institutions. Universities hire people. Universities invest money. Universities can practice equity in everything they do. There are a million choices a day where universities, like foundations, like other organizations that hire, fire, promote, uh, and keep down, uh, can think about the, the justice that is in all of those choices. And I think that that is, is really, really important. Universities, also like other institutions, are led in some type of way, which I think brings us to the question of what do people do with and how do they figure out with their own particular styles and strengths to best leverage their leadership platform. Uh, if other people in some way answer to you, then somebody will listen to what you have to say. <laughs> what do you do with that moment? What do you do with that microphone? What do you say in your own voice that you stand for <coughs> that puts a value into the world? So I think those values are continuous. Where universities, I think, are different um, in uh, spaces that are really very, very powerful are, one, um, there is time in a different way at universities. Um, there is not always uh, the urgency uh, to, to do things right away in the way that there sometimes is in different sorts <coughs> of businesses. Contemplation is what we do in the academy. Create knowledge is what we do in the academy. The time that takes is a rich and luxurious commodity that I think uh, can translate into real and transformative wisdom when it asks the intersectional questions and the justice questions that say who's in the room, who's not in the room, uh, and how do we learn and understand where we stand at a particular moment and place in time. So the time of universities allows us to do that. I think also to the research function at universities, uh, right now places that both uh, create, literally create, uh, fact-based knowledge <laughs> and the tools of critical thinking are actually creating commodities that are what the world needs now. So I think to think about the different forms that that can take and to think about with um, strategic choices of what kinds of disciplines are, are, are funded and supported. I do have to say right now, being especially proud here at Columbia that African American Studies is uh, soon to be a department, a PhD granting department. <laughs> Uh, thanks Farrah. to Farrah Griffin's leadership and the leadership of so many others. But why that matters, why that matters is that that says that that particular discipline with all of its tools, it has a different seat at the table in what this university says matters as a way of thinking about and understanding um, the world. It affects how the core curriculum and that moment where you can say to students, you should read this and you don't have to read that, that is incredibly, incredibly important. So how, what, what is supported is, is, is crucial. And then I think the other important thing that makes universities distinct from, um, uh, from foundations and other places, and I, I, I say this with great knowledge because it's the thing that I miss most, although I'm figuring out how to get it in, is kids, <laughs> right? I mean, so, uh, you know, people who are either, either young people or people who are in an intensely dedicated learning mode at life, of life, that life force, that energy, that possibility that everything, young people being able to say how do we create citizens in a concentrated way. What I know from coming out of the fields of African American studies and gender studies <coughs> is that working through those questions with those tools and literature, literatures with people who are learning in the classroom has equipped those young people better to deal with the problems that still vex us today uh, uh, than anything else I can imagine. 
So I think that, you know, after decades of teaching, seeing the way that uh, mixed in all kinds of ways, groups of people move difficultly through uh, with the guide uh, of, uh, of interdisciplinary thinking makes me believe that A, that is sacred work, and B, that is actually necessary work because we see all of these conversations that are failing tremendously in an increasingly hostile environment, and that's what I think we need to be preparing um, students to be able to do. So um, that's a very, very special opportunity that, that universities have. Thank you so much. Thank you.